Welcome to Sailing Ruby Rose. Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose if you are a returning customer. I sound like a flight attendant. Anyway, it's noisy, it's hot, it's busy. There's a lot going on because today is almost the final day when the last bits of CAD design, the computer design have been turned into mock-up so we can finally physically visualize the last bits, especially the galley and the nav station. Let's go on board, have a look. It's super exciting. So I wanted to talk to you about Vietnam's weather. We are at the end of rainy season. But when I say the end, it's still raining and it's raining hard. And the rain here, the rain comes and it goes. And I've waited, well, about an hour for the rain to stop. Literally the black cloud of doom came over. The result of that is that you get torrential rain for an hour. But the downside to that is that the flooding that you get is insane. What happens is the entire area that I live in is pretty close to the river. And what that means is that when the tides are high, you end up with, well, essentially everything flooding. So when you plan your journey in this part of Ho Chi Minh City to go anywhere, you have to take into account, number one, the weather. Because it is inherently very dangerous to drive in the rain. And not just because it's raining, it's because the Vietnamese drive in a pretty sketchy manner when it's not raining. When it's about to rain or is raining, they drive faster. Look, I mean, look at this idiot. So, everyone drives twice as fast, and this rain has passed. Honestly, like, I was looking out the window in my apartment, like, 20 minutes ago, and I thought the roof of the building opposite was gonna come off. So yeah, so the end of rainy season, but it's still, it's pretty damn wet, and the road up ahead is pretty flooded. So I have to get my legs up onto the bike, and hopefully not stall the engine and understand that what I'm about to go through is anything up to and including 24 inches of water and that my feet are gonna get wet and that there's hidden obstacles and waves. I mean, this is the closest I've been to bloody sailing in two years. And this is just life in Tao Dien, Vietnam. And this actually, honestly, if this was combined, as I said, with the high tide, uh i'd be up to my i've been up to my knees in water before so something you have to just be mindful of but it's all part of the joy of living life in this amazing city but it's a real cultural eye-opener and the fact that the vietnamese don't even blink at it they just this is probably why they wear flip-flops because they're waterproof you know they just end up with wet feet so now the weather is much better now the weather seems to there's even a little bit of blue sky up there so very very asian weather an hour of like crazy storm and then much akin to a squall at sea so yeah this is a little bit of my life in vietnam apparently actually just as an aside um Teresa's, well, i guess our niece Everly um, apparently enjoys the video parts where I'm on a motorbike. So yeah. So hello Everly. Uncle Nicky is uh, yeah driving around Vietnam filming. Now don't do this when you get older. Remember this. You're not allowed to be on a motorbike in Vietnam filming and riding in the rain. This is not what a, a sensible uncle would be telling you to do. So yeah, just watch. Watch and learn. Okay. Well, listen. I hope you enjoyed that. A little bit of life in Vietnam. And um, yeah, I will catch up with you all later. So here we are on hole one. One question we've been asked a lot about is visibility from the helm stations because a lot of people talk about 1260 and the smaller sea winds, not the 1600 because it's got a completely different kind of setup. 
but what's the visibility like? So now that I'm actually in the cockpit and the galley's in place and the chart table's in place, I can sit here and not give you the theoretical about what's the visibility like. So this is obviously starboard helm. Let me tell you about my blind spots are, and I think they're probably about the same as they would be in the 1260. So if I'm looking here, there's obviously the frame for this window, but I can move my head and I've got full visibility there. So I don't have any problems there. Again, if I'm looking to starboard, what visibility issues do I have? I can see one, two, three, four. So I can see all four corners of the boat. So for docking, starboard helm, no issue at all. Let me just walk over to this area, just step forward a little bit so that I can kind of work out where I would be and what I'd be looking at if I was sailing. So from the starboard helm, <clears throat> obviously no mast, but I can see this window is pretty sizable. And again, probably a little blind spot just in that corner there, but nothing that can't be completely, you know, if you move six inches or even just tilt your head, you're gonna get over that. Now let's head over to the port side helm and see what's over there. So here we are, port side helm. Let's just have a little look again. I mean, this is almost symmetrical, well, apart from the fact that the galley's over there. So there are the same potential small blind spots there and there, but nothing that causes me any concern. Also, it's because this boat is so much bigger than the 1260, the distance between where I'm sat or where I'm stood to helm and the outboard side, I actually can feel the difference in that, which basically means that for me, when I'm on watch or what I'm trying to do is actually to keep myself protected from inclement weather, I have more protection there. And with the side clears, we are gonna have an almost completely enclosed cockpit, which is something which I will be very, very happy with. So yeah, so the question about helm stations, is there visibility problems? Absolutely none. These windows are huge. Nice to see these big sturdy handrails. And I believe that these are gonna be supplemented with handrails up there. So again, the question about visibility, not a problem for me at all. Let's move on to have a look inside. And so here we are, the mock-up, finally for the nav desk. Now, a couple of things. Every nav desk is different for different owners. And for instance, we will not be having this. This is a standard DC switching unit. We are going for the master vault system, the, uh, the, the touch system. But again, all the switching panel and the switching gear that's in there is actually going to be covered with a smoke perspex kind of uh, door to make it aesthetically more appealing. But again, there's some nice curves there. The desk will obviously still be put in place at some point in the future for taking charts, but it's very, very nice to see what we're actually gonna be using for navigation at night or in bad weather, or just to kind of like passage plan. And then as we swing around here, what I can do by just pan this camera around a little bit, ta-da, the galley, everything in place, albeit in MDF. Now. As you may remember, if you've been watching the videos from before, what we have uh, when they are making these molds, they start with the CAD, then they move to MDF, and then they actually finally get the, the carpenters to come in once they're happy that actually the realization of the CAD is practical in this space. So again, galley, it's huge, extensive, probably, I don't know, 50% bigger than our kitchen in London. So really, really, really lovely to see. And again, lots and lots of pantry storage up here, but also in both those holes. So I don't have any real issue about that. And again, it's a very light, airy space. The glass is outside, that will all be bonded in. And the next time we come back, you should see that you've got some windows here. So it's really coming together and it's lovely to see like what is gonna be our home. So yeah, super happy to see this. So that is the galley. And that is the chart table or the nav desk. And as I move around, I'm just gonna show you lots of other little bits that I just, I've spiked my uh, interest. So let's just go on deck and uh, show you the little bits there. Cause I think the tramps are on now and there's some other bits just I'd like you to see. Let's go on board. One question we have been asked about all these LED lights because there's a lot of them there. And I did a lot of work on these um, years ago discussing with uh, Shane and uh, Mike about whether they're going to be dimmable, how functional it is. And yes, these are, I believe there's an option to have them dimmable and red lights as well. So yes, we will have dimmable lights. So whoever asked the question about dimmable lighting, yes, we will have it. Please continue to ask questions or if you're a patron, just WhatsApp us and then we'll let you know. Just to kind of like spin you up here a little bit, some of the BNG instrumentation just on in there. So again, 
all dry fitted. But again, you're going to be able to see the visibility there for the size of your plotters. We are having much bigger plotters here. I think we are having 12 inch plotters at the helm. But again, this is a very, very, very expansive space. So yeah, like super, super interesting to see this. Yeah, now that the, the workers are actually off the boat, you can really do get a sense of exactly how much space we're going to have. But there's some little developments on deck I do want you to see. So let's have a little look here. Firstly, these things, they are little upstands so that you can drag yourself up. The little hand holds to get yourself onto the coach roof because it's quite a big step. Nice touch, nice touch. Mast base is down there. And now what we've got, we actually have the cars for the jib track. All these hatches flush now. And you can see now that now what they've got is very thick, very expensive glass. These have been delivered from Australia very, very recently. And these will be the side windows there going in there just to kind of put you in line of what noise is that is the carbon fiber target arch for our boat that's just being lifted over so that's uh, that's what they're doing there so yeah so as you can see there's a lot going on on the deck a lot of work with small things that deck fittings are almost all complete now the trampolines are all laced up all the bit loosely and they are really moving into what i would consider to be the final stage of fit out i would say that within the next four to seven weeks this boat will be in the water so we really are getting there and uh, about bloody time but nonetheless though no, global supply chain issues aside super excited about this and over the coming weeks you are going to see these final fittings really coming to play because don't forget just because they are you know they haven't put the mattresses on the beds they are all made and just waiting to waiting to go in so it's a bit like one of those house renovation programs where at the last minute they kind of put the flowers and the bookshelves in this is all just waiting to be dressed i think that is the word so yeah so there's a lot of amazing stuff going on here windows will be in very very soon and you are going to really see a boat with a mast on it before too long so super excited about that one I'm just going to have a quick whiz onto hull two because a lot of you have asked about hull two. So again, from our point of view, if I just spin the camera around, that is hull two, and then they've got three, four, five down there, six and seven over there. One thing to show you is that the carbon coach roof and the target arch are being bonded on today. There's a whole team, whole team of guys. I'm just going to walk through here and try not to kill myself. I'm trying to film at the same time. So yeah, just hull two, which is obviously Ruby Rose two. We've got that carbon bulkhead and then back there the target arch there's a lot a lot going on there so look an amazing amazing amount of work i am super happy with everything and um if you enjoyed this episode give us a like give us a thumbs up and we will see you all next week with another look at boat building in saigon take care goodbye